Good morning. Can everybody do something real quick for me? Um, but look in your front pocket and make sure that your um, insert has the right day and time. Mm -hmm. So June 4th at 10 a.m.? June, sorry. Whatever today is. We're gonna do something a little fun. I'm gonna follow a different service. <laughs> See if you can keep up. All right, we found one with last week's in it, so I just wanted to make sure that we didn't get into our worship service today and have it be something different. Um, can you give me your announcements? This morning, we would like you to keep in your prayers Bill Loafman, Paul Blinn, Brenda Kayser, Jean Marchatelli, and uh, Dana Kleinsmith. Are there any other announcements? So there's a celebration for the first responders Wednesday at noon. There's a poster back there that you can sign your thank you to. And also, um, if you would feel so called to bring um, some type of food item, there's a sign-up sheet for that in the back as well. Uh, we also have a small amount of the gift baskets that you will see downstairs. Um, we got a whole bunch of gift baskets and shout out to Miss Patty Avery for doing some of that. So it was really nice. And um, this is going to, all the proceeds are going to uh, youth ministry events. And um, this year our vacation Bible school is going to be July 11th. And um, it's going to be an ocean themed vacation Bible school. And I just want to say, uh, I do this every year. I do the same announcement every year. I want to say thank you to all of Grace Church, all the congregation for getting together and bringing food for these kids, bringing the dinners, because not many churches do this, and it's because of our congregation coming together and donating this food. So thank you, and please come downstairs and check out all the gift baskets. Thanks. I made this announcement a couple weeks ago, and uh, if you remember also, on Pentecost, the choir wasn't here. And you also noticed that how valuable our choir is. And uh, you also notice the choir isn't here again. It's the summertime. We're giving them a little break. But if you will also notice, the choir is dispersed throughout the congregation. This is to help give the congregation um, a little support throughout the congregation. So they're going to be there giving you a little bit more support to help you sing. So in, also in that, um, we're trying it. We'll see how it goes. Um, we also want to help you in choosing the hymns. I choose the hymns. Um, I go in, on to the Sundays and seasons uh, that we follow through the liturgy. Um, and they give me suggestions on what the hymns are supposed to be. They give the church suggestions on what the service and the, um, the readings are also supposed to be. So that's where I choose the hymns from. I know them. This choir knows them, but sometimes the congregation is a little bit not sure of them. But also the congregation has their favorites. So what I'm going to do is uh, by next week, I will have a box in the back and I will have it, uh, some paper in there that I would like you to place your favorite hymns in there. And I will be incorporating those throughout the year your favorite hymns into the service. I've already had requests made to me. So if you have any requests, put those in the box. But if you have, before that, give those to me. I will write them down and incorporate them into the service so that you will be able to sing some of your favorite hymns. Okay? 
Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, I'd also like to welcome and thank Pastor Camberg, who is with us today while Pastor Clegg is on vacation so that we could have a communion service for worship. And so very grateful for his presence. He and his uh, lovely wife have a long history here and many of you probably know them. There might be a few that don't, but p this is Pastor Camberg and his wife, Mrs. Camberg, is sitting there towards the back. So thank you. Let us rise for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Please, please. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of 1 Kings starting with the 17th verse of chapter 17. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then turned to Elijah. What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, give me your son. He took him from her bosom carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, the life of the child came into him again and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly from Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. 
You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, are you faithful? Give thanks in his holy remembrance. God's wrath is short, God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, may You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing, O Lord my God. I will give you thanks forever. The second reading is from the book of Galatians, first chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel was, that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born, and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me, so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I did go up into Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilia. And I was still unknown by the sight to the churches of Judea that are in, now in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was, with, he was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. And with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bear and the bear stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them and they glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen among us and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding company, country. This is the word of the Lord. Do we have any children to come forward? Oop. All right. You can come sit with me. Let's all take a break. I'm gonna 
5K yesterday, so my ankles really hurt. You ran a 5K? That's awesome. Did you do the beaver 5K? High five. How is everyone this morning? Good. Good? Sit down. So you say your ankles hurt, right? Do any of the rest of you play outside? You play outside? I played outside all day. You played outside all day? Do any of you other ones play outside? Do you ever fall? Yeah. And get scrapes? I got stung by no. a bee. Oh yeah, you got stung by a bee. And what happened when you got stung by the bee? Um, it hurt. It hurt? And then did you put anything on it? What'd you put on it? You don't, don't remember what it's called. Do you ever have anything put on your, when you get hurt, when you get a scrape, do you ever have anything put on it? A Band-Aid? A Band-Aid, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another way of protection, huh? So that you don't get hurt. Well, that's exactly what we hear in our stories today about Jesus, right? When we get hurt, we can call on Jesus and he can give us healing. What other ways do you think Jesus might heal us? What if we're sad about something? Can we pray to Jesus when we're sad? Yeah. How about when you're fighting with your brother or your sister or a friend? Might that be a good time? Uh -huh. And Jesus has the ability to heal all of it, just like we heard in the story of Jesus healing the sons this morning, right? They called on Jesus' name and Jesus healed them. And so that's what we can do too. Does that sound pretty good? Uh -huh. Yes. Will you pray with me? Uh -huh. Dear Jesus, Thank you for healing us. Thank you for healing us. When we're in trouble, when we're in trouble we, have a promise we have a promise that we can call, we can call on, your name. on your name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Thank you.